All right, uh, today we're back again with a uh, explanation video. I've had a few questions about my water pump slash coolant setup. Um, a lot of people at the tracks always ask me about how my rear radiator is working and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so I'll just figure out to make a video about an electric water pump on a drift car. I mean, uh, some people, a lot of people do it. But I don't think anyone actually explains how they do it or why they do it or how it works. So. Without that, with that being said, I'm gonna get over here and show you what we're working with. In here, it's down here in this little hole that I made out of the old uh, fuel pump sender unit location. It's a Davies Craig EWP 150. It uh, supposedly flows like 50, 55 gallons an hour. Um, it pulls directly out of my radiator. I got a 16A on lines on both. I had to weld it on. Um, this line comes right directly out straight into the water pump. These, uh, these water pumps, they work better pushing, kind of like a fuel pump, not pulling. So you always want it as close to the water source as possible so it can push all the way through instead of having to suck and pull up if you had the water pump up there in the radiator back here. Um, so there, it runs there, and then I've got a line that runs. The lines run through the car. There's two lines that are in, in this little box here, and they go up through there. Then they come out right here. Um, I have bulkhead fittings, 16A in on both. They come out here. This uh, bottom one here is the feed to the engine. Um, it goes down. It splits into a Y because the LS... The LS water system is split between the banks. They don't, none of the water jackets cross the engine, the block at all. So you've got a Y that splits off here, which they're kind of expensive, the 16AN. Um, so I have 12AN Ys with a 16AN hose to 12Y adapter. It's a little bit cheaper, but I still paid like 60 bucks a piece for just the Y itself, which kind of sucks, but it makes the whole system a little bit easier to work with. Um, and then it goes into this side, and then this hose goes to that side. And then it comes out these top ones. So there's the top one here, and this top one over here. It comes out, and then this is the vent for the, the steam vent. So it comes out here. There's only, these heads are 243 heads, and they, they only have the port on the front of the engine. The back ones are blocked off, so that's kind of a lucky thing. Um, since LS engines typically sit kind of backwards, um, most of the air pockets are always towards the front of the heads. So that's there. Um, and then it just runs right back to the radiator to the other side and goes up. Um, I do have my water pump running off of a relay. I have it uh, wired in like any other relay. And my Holly is actually the trigger. Um, you can run the trigger off of your Holly or whatever ECU you're running, or just the manual switch. It used to be that way before I got my Holly system. Um, I work. I love it. It comes on at 100. Uh, when the engine gets 100 degrees, the water pump kicks on, and then once my temperature gets 180, the Holly also kicks my fans on. Um, I'm using a Jeep radiator. Uh, it, it just fit. It, I had a. Whenever it all happened, I had a. A used Jeep radiator that I had just replaced so I just kind of mocked it up to see if it would fit it fit so I ordered uh, an aftermarket off-road aluminum one um, it's got three 10 inch or nine and a half inch sorry uh, they flow they flow pretty well um, they're all wired into one relay which they should be on separate relays but supposedly they're only pull, draw like 12.6 amps a piece and I've got a 45 amp relay so uh, you know I haven't had any problems yet. They don't, doesn't bust, doesn't blow relays or fuses or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, it, it works. I don't see temperatures here lately more than 200, and that's after I've been hot lapping. When we went down to clutch kickers, I was seeing average temperatures 180. You know, I go out, make a run, it's 180, I pull in, and it cools off in no time because of the electric water pump. It's not like the OEM GM pumps that, yes, they flow 60 gallons an hour at you know 6,000 rpm but they they don't they only flow like 8 to 10 at idle so this pump flows 55 gallons non-stop all the time so 
Yes, it's not as good at high RPM, but it's better all around. So you pull in the pits for three minutes and you know, your 200 is back down to 160. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really, really simple, self-explanatory with this kind of system. Um, there are a lot of aftermarket water pumps. You can buy some that bolt directly to the engine. I highly recommend whatever you do, if you're running 16 and line, if you're just running radiator in the front, whatever you do, your water pump should be as close as, to your water source as possible. Um, you don't want it overstraining, just like you don't want a fuel pump all the way up here having to suck all the way from the back, you know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I can think about when it comes to the water system. If you have any questions, any, you know, want me to go in depth with anything else, just uh, feel free to comment, you know, let me know, and I'll see what I can come up with.